Here is the first question. So this is an extensive form game. And if you remember, that was one of the quiz questions. So the question was asking, write down the strategies for each player. There are three players and, you know, the normal form representation of this game. Um, so here there are three players, player one, two and three. And here are the strategies. I mean, you know the strategies, but I'll just write them anyway. So the first player has two strategies, capital L, capital R, or left and right. Player two has two strategies, uh, small L, small R, left, right. Player three, however, four strategies. I'm going to explain why uh, she has four strategies. It's U, 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 D. Uh, D U D D. Uh, by the way, these all sort of corresponds to U U. For example, says U on the left side, U on the right side. All right. So the first strategy is what the third player is going to do on the left side of this game. So I'm, I'm calling this left side, and this is the right side. And so the second part is always the right side. So for example, if it is U D, all right, it means here she's going to be playing U. However, here she's going to be playing D, all right? Uh, and symmetrically, D, U, D, D. All right, so here, how do we really find the strategies in general? Well, remember the strategy is a function. So this definition is very important. Strategy is a function which maps each information set of a player to a strategy or action available at that information set, all right? So it's a function. So what is function? Function maps one set over another, right? This is what function is. So how many functions you can generate, uh, you know, it depends on the number of elements in the domain and the number of elements in the range, okay? So for example, player one, how many information set does he have? Well, remember the information set? Well, each decision node is also an information set, okay? So here, player one moves in this game just once, and so he has only one information set. So I'm gonna call this info set as, I don't know, um, A1, okay? Well, how many information set player two has? Player two moves in this game in two possible cases or scenarios, right? She may move here when after player one plays L, and she may move here again, I mean, not again, again is, is a wrong place. So she may move here after player one plays R. But the thing is, player two has only one info set, meaning she cannot distinguish whether she is here or here. For that reason, I'm gonna call this, in, so she has one info set, I'm gonna call this info set as B2, uh, all right? What about player three? Player three, again, has one, two, three, four decision nodes, but two of those are included in one info set. The other two is included in another info set. All right. And, you know, these two decision nodes are not in the same info set as this, these two. What does that mean? That means player three, when she is here, she's going to know that player one actually played L. All right. The only thing that she can't distinguish is whether the second player played le uh, left or right. Symmetrically, when player three is called upon to choose an action, she will know that she actually is here, meaning the first guy is played R, all right? Uh, this is what that means. So if I, for example, put those dotted lines here and combine all those four decision nodes, that would mean Player three has no information whether player one played left or right. And so player three has only one info set. Okay. But again, we don't have dots here, meaning those two nodes are not included in the same info set as these two nodes. Hence, she has two info sets. I'm going to call them uh, C3, D3. All right. I'm just naming the info sets. Okay. Question? Yeah, question, yeah. Go ahead. If the, the one you removed the info set, if she had only one info set, for instance, uh -huh. that strategy would be the two only, U and D? Exactly. She would have only two strategies, U and D. Yep. All right, so now 
Uh, what I'm going to do is, you know, define the strategy for each player. So let's talk about player one first. So how many info sets? Uh, the domain of my function or strategy is the uh, info sets. So she has only one info set called A1. So there's only one element in the domain. Well, how many elements are there in the range? Well, the range is the available actions for player one. Player one has two available actions. She can choose left or right. All right, so two actions, left, right. Question is, how many functions can I draw from this set to this set? Well, this is one of the functions. So this is one strategy. Another strategy is A1 left, right. So this is another function, right? So remember, I mean, you don't have to do this sort of stupid Venn diagram thing again and again, but maybe it's, it's, a, it's a good thing to do it at least once and sort of um, visualize what really, uh, what strategy really is. So strategy is a function mapping each info set to an available action at that info set. And this is one potential strategy. And this is another potential strategy. Are there any strategy for this player? No. For example, this is not a strategy. I'm sorry, I don't have, I, I don't want to erase those. So this is, let's say, A1, left, right. For example, is this a strategy? Well, no, hell no, this is no strategy. Why not? Well, remember the definition of function? So function cannot map the same element into two different or three different elements in the range. This is not a function, all right? Um, so therefore, that's it. There are two potential functions meaning two potential strategies. And how do we represent those functions? We represent them as LR, as simple as this. Clear? Okay, now let's talk about player two. Uh, sort of the same thing. Well, let's actually skip player two because player two has, again, only one info set, B2 here. And how many actions, well, yeah, let's do it. Player two has only one info set, uh, B2. How many available actions does she have? Well, left, right. Hmm, so you're gonna say, well, she has left, right here, but also left, right here. So shouldn't I write left, left, right, right? Or sort of left on the left side, left on the right side, all right? So, you know, these are sets. So the sets usually do not include more than uh, one same element again and again. So you may want to distinguish this. This is left on the uh, sort of left part of the game. This is left on the right part of the game. This is right on the left part. This is right on the right side. So you may think it sort of, well, she has four available actions. Hmm, that's the problem. She doesn't have four available actions. Why not? Well, remember, she cannot distinguish whether she is at this decision node or at this decision node. Meaning, she cannot distinguish whether player one played left or right. So that means a strategy that says, hey, B2 is going to uh, left left or B2 is going to uh, or map to left right meaning uh, the, the the left action on the right side of the game so yes this is a valid strategy but this is not really a valid strategy why is that well these strategies are basically telling us that the second player can actually distinguish between uh, this left and this left meaning she can actually distinguish this decision node and this decision node Again, which means she can actually distinguish whether the first guy played left or right. But again, this contradicts with the idea that these two decision nodes are actually in the same info set. All right, so for that reason, in this info set, player two has only two available actions, small left, small right. And once again, how many strategies she may have? Two. This is one strategy, and the other strategy is basically mapping B2 to R. So this is the second strategy. Sometimes we call this uh, S and this S prime, for example, but instead here, what, how we sort of uh, uh, denote those strategies by just the actions, you know, small L, small R, all right? Well, now what about the third player? 
So she has, so the third player has two info sets. So on the domain, in the domain, she has uh, C3 and she has D3. Okay, good. How many available strategies, I'm sorry, actions are on for each info set? Hmm, well, maybe the best thing is to, I mean, we're not doing formal mathematics here, right? You can sort of uh, um, divide this set into two parts. On the one part, you can just put the actions available in this info set, C3. So they are U and D. And here, again, the same number, uh, you know, uh, actions, U and D, their they name's the same. But the thing is, when you define a function from this set to this set, you have to be careful that, you know, C3 will be mapped into here, and D3 will be mapped into here. D3 will never map here, okay? Because these are U's and D's on the left part of the game. Alternatively, you can do something similar to what I previously did. You can say, this is U, this is also U, meaning you can just ignore this, all right? This is U, but on the left side of the game, and this is D on the left side, and this is U on the right side, and this is D on the right side. If you wish, you can do it this way, all right? Uh, that's totally up to you. Uh, but I don't want to do it this way. Uh, the reason is, I mean, I don't have UL, DL here. And so what I'm going to do is, you know, I'm going to hypothetically divide these two sets. And so I have to send C3 here. So this is one function, right? Which basically corresponds to UU. But there's another function, which is, uh, this is C3, this is D3. Uh, this is U, this is D, U, D. So I send uh, C3 to D and D3 to U. So which strategy is this? Well, this corresponds to D, U, this one. All right. So if you count the number of such functions from this set into this set, but don't forget that those functions have to satisfy that C3 always goes to one of those top two actions and d3 always goes to these two bottom actions uh, not that they are ranked but sort of you know up means this part down means this part so if you count those functions you're going to see there are four possible functions and hence she has four possible strategies and we just represent them as u u u d d u d d so that's basically the general idea how we uh, uh, define strategies and how we write strategies um, any question? Well, then the rest is just filling up the boxes, uh, which I am not going to complete because of the time limits. So the thing is, because there are three players, we put the row player, usually player one, the column player is player two, and player three is the matrix player. So this corresponds to player one's uh, player three's strategy, but she has four strategies. That means we need to write four different boxes, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to skip the other two. So this is always, the row is always player one, column is always player two. All right, so I'm going to call, this is the matrix that corresponds to strategy UU, and this is the matrix corresponds to the third player strategy UD. There's going to be another matrix for DU, another matrix for DD. All right. Well, what about player one? Player one's strategies are simple. Left, right, small left, small right for the second player. So this may be the, ch the, uh, the second challenging part is filling out those boxes. So I'm not going to fill out all of them, but let's pick, you know, some of those boxes. For example, this one. Uh, it says player one plays left, player two plays left, and player three plays UD. All right, so player one plays left, put arrow, because it's gonna help you a lot. Player two plays small left, here and here, but you know what, what she plays here is irrelevant because player one played left. But anyway, put the arrow, 
And then player one played UD. Hmm, don't forget, U corresponds her actions in on the left side, D corresponds on the right side. So she played D here, but she played U here. So what is going to be the payoff corresponding to this box? Well, just follow the arrows. All right, so we call this path of the game. So player one is playing left, and then player two is playing small left, and then player three is playing U. So that means they're going to end up five, two, three. So therefore, the payoffs here are five, two, three. Okay? For example, what is this box? Player one plays R, player two plays left, and again, the UD. Well, this time, player one is not playing left, but he's playing right. Player two is playing left. And player one, uh, player three, I'm sorry, is playing UD. Don't forget, U here, D here. So that means the corresponding payoff is two, two, one. And so on. We fill out the rest of the boxes uh, by just following the strategies. That's it.